Okay. <laughs> Ready, set, go. All right. Um, there was, I was listening to um, an interview, and one it, uh, was James Gall, and uh, it was uh, Patricia King, I believe it was, and they brought out some things, and it was really, it struck me. And one of the things was, and I don't know if you all have heard, um, well, I know you know that there's 50 days between Passover and Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and did you know, though, this is, I did not know this, that there was uh, either four or five category um, hurricane that hit, um, it's called Vanuatu. Okay, it's between uh, Australia and the Fiji, kind mm -hmm. of, not quite in the middle, but mm -hmm. close in there. And um, anyway, it was named Harold. I don't know if that is uh, anything. But um, it, it struck Pentecost Island and Espiritu Santo, which means Holy Spirit Holy Island. Spirit. Uh -huh. Okay. Espiritu Santo. It was the, the second strongest in their history, and it is the first four or five storm to move over the islands. Um, there was also extreme lightning, and they call it EEL, enveloped eyewall lightning, which is unusual. It's common only in like really extreme storms, and they had 23,000 strikes in 24 hours. Okay, I, that was, I don't know, that, I thought that was significant, yeah. okay? Um, and then we talked about the, uh, in the days of Noah, and you know, we sometimes concentrate on the sin that they were going through, and what I got was a combination of things that was said and done, that sometimes we need to look at that more as, as a redemptive thing. And we do, and we sometimes fail to look at what was going on in a, in a, I can't talk, in an redemptive nature. Okay, um, there was protection, and there was uh, preservation, provision, and then there was new promise. Okay, um, the ark was used to transport people from one error into another error. Okay, so we they completely left that one time and they went into a whole different time. And mm -hmm. that was that transition time. And I know we talked about transition. We have talked about it. Um, that, so I'm thinking, you know, we could be in that transition time. And uh, it was protection from the storm. Okay, so while they're going through that, there is protection there. For it was protection for Noah and, and the animals. There was also provision, and I think that could, um, when we translate that into where we're at now, there were signs and wonders in Noah's time, and then I think it can translate into the marketplace that there's going to be signs and wonders, and there's going to be provision, which it could be finances, um, whatever we need, and. Um, <clears throat> It struck me while I was thinking about that, that even, you know, okay, they get off, they do their thing, and sometimes we kind of put a period at the end, but look how much God still had to provide for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the animals all still had to live. All, you know, his family still had to be provided for. He had to have, uh, well, you know, he had been building this ship for how long? 100 years. years. Yeah, 120 years. Uh, <clears throat> tells me he wasn't much of a farmer. What he was doing was busy building ships. Mm -hmm. And so he had learned to provide, you know, God, I think, had to show us, you know, we know he got drunk, so maybe that was his uh, learning curve. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he was he was sampling his uh, his uh, abilities, and maybe when, yeah, he was, it was pretty potent in there. Uh, but so there was provision there, and then a new promise. You know, we know that God told them that I'm not going to ever destroy the living things on the earth again. You know, so he gave promise there also. And um, we know in this, uh, in when he was providing, and uh, preserving rather, the seed of Jesus came through, had to come through Noah. So he wasn't just providing. Uh, keeping Noah's family safe, he was also preserving the seed, mm -hmm. you know, for, of uh, mm -hmm. Jesus. 
So, um, I thought this was very interesting. Somebody look up Genesis 8, 21 and just read it. Dorina, I'll just let you do that. And this is talking about after, um, in transition times, God always brings something better afterwards. Okay? Um, and this is after he sends the dove out, they've landed, and he has built an altar. Okay, go ahead and just read that, 821. Uh, and I be here. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of human heart is evil from childhood. Never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. Okay. I thought it was very interesting. And the, there's a, two or three quotes that just stood out for me. And uh, one of them is that the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the quote was, the last thing God inhales is the first thing he exhales. So they got out. They blessed the Lord. They gave thanks for the Lord. And, the first, and then what did he do? He blessed them. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just something. The, the last thing that he inhales is the first thing he exhales. Mm -hmm. So when we come out of this quarantine, I think it's really important that we thank, that we bless God and we thank God. So I got that out of that. Um, and then the question was, could we be entering into a season of never again? He said he would never again mm -hmm. do s certain things. So I don't know. I you know that is a question that I that. Uh, I think we can think about. Um, and uh, sometimes I think we need a fresh revelation of God's righteousness, and then we need to live from that, because we get stuck in our preconceived, you know, the Noah story, the mm -hmm. sinners, the sin. Mm -hmm. You know, he's locked up the, out the sinners from being able to go in. You know, different things like that. But we forget sometimes the revelation of his goodness. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then they talked about a fresh movement of holiness. And um, James um, Gall talked about go that he was allowed to, in a vision to go into what they called a creation room. And it was filled with new ideas, fresh cre uh, creations, concepts, uh, inventions, uh, fresh teachings and songs, hmm. and I know we have prayed. I I, I know Sherry has prayed that we be sent uh, new ideas and mm -hmm. new and you know inventions and etc. And he he kind of I thought was a confirmation from what what I've heard you pray. <clears throat> and um, so th there's some different just things. I just did some little quotes that just stood out this week. And one was, the enemy tries to enter the church through the spirit of trauma. Yeah. The second thing is, when the land rests, or when, you know, when the land rests, the land heals. You have to rest to heal. Mm -hmm. And so, is this time, maybe we're in a rest time? Uh, and I know uh, Patricia King was talking about that she had done some um, online, whatever, you know, little session type things. And she said... In that one day, there was over 200,000 people that had watched. And she said, oh, yeah, most of the time that takes, you know, way a lot longer than that. So she said, there's no building that would be able to house this. Mm -hmm. So is this God doing a new thing, looking for uh, to change, you know, the things? We're not going to go back into the old thing, you know. When Noah came out of the boat, it didn't look like the old earth. It didn't look like he didn't do the old things that was first. And I think it's important for for the church as a whole not to do the old things. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then when we shift, we need to shift into a new-looking thing. And then uh, another one was quietness is the incubation bed for revelation. But sometimes we just need to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was, if that wasn't for everybody else, it was for me. <laughs> okay, uh, and that same thing, the last thing God inhales is the first thing he exhales, and <clears throat> when we shift, we are never to shift back into the old thing. And the third, this is the last thing then, is the deeper we sleep, 
the louder the alarm has to be to wake us. So if the church or us are asleep, and we're deeply asleep, that sometimes there has to be something that alarms us and wakes us, and the deeper we're sleeping, it's just like in the physical you know, uh, realm, if you have not slept, it sometimes takes a really loud alarm to wake us up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The word herald, or the name herald, mm -hmm. uh, means army leader, but the spiritual is born of God. And the scriptures, Acts 17, uh, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. That's so interesting with your seed. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> and I, you know what I thought of? It's a little joke where the little kid is praying and says, our Father who art in heaven, herald be thy name. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it could even be that. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and that was it. That.